On a night that proved that rest doesn't always equal rust, especially in the home goal, the Rangers get the last laugh. Alexi Lafreniere in overtime, 2-1 the final over the Colorado Avalanche. Inside our Delta MSG studios, John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, and Steve Valaket. The overtime lasted a minute 53, yeah. but at both ends of the ice, Jonathan Quick's fingerprints were all over it. Yes, uh, he was big the entire night, especially when things didn't seem like they were favoring the Rangers as far as puck possession. By the time you get to overtime, he needed three more big saves. First one on Makar on a breakaway, and then on McKinnon, who was outstanding the entire game, and then Taves. McKinnon holds the puck one more time, makes a play to the middle, and, you know, gets this puck into an area that's a scoring area, and Quick is up again, and... Guys, I'll tell you what, my vote is for Jonathan Quick for starting goalie until proven otherwise. Wow. Lafreniere. Wow. In the middle. Rantanen is reaching, and Lafreniere is teaching. <laughs> Outstanding outcome for the Rangers in a game where, guys, there were times this looked like it was going to go sideways, if not for a few momentum stops along the way. The Rangers definitely earned the extra point in overtime with how well they played to stay with it. This was a game that wasn't always theirs. They stuck with it. I and this that, is one they could be really proud of. Yeah, that was the key, to stay with it. You know, looking at this game for two periods, Colorado was the better team. And you wanted more from the Rangers, and we did yeah. in the third. They played a really good third period. They came out with a lot more intensity in their game. They charged the net way more, challenged Georgia a lot more, and they, they earned that tie game going into overtime and you know again key is not to get frustrated because it, it felt like watching that game that Colorado was the better team and might start trying to do too many things and push to play and open up too much but they didn't mm -hmm. so you got to give the Rangers credit for for sticking to their game plan and in the end they they tied the game and even won and then overtime. So it was yeah. great to watch. And remember, Colorado entered that third period with more goals in the third than any team in the league. The best goal differential in the third period in the NHL. Rangers outscored them in the third and won the game in overtime. For Alexi Lafreniere, his 13th goal of the season. But four of those have been game winners. Tonight certainly was. And here he is moments ago with Michelle Gingras. So what would you think of the resilience your team showed in this game? It was good. Um... Had kind of a not our best first period, but um, second and third was was better. And uh, you know, being down down one in the third, and Brett scored a big goal, so uh, got us a uh, little bit of energy, and uh, it was good. What did you see in the overtime? Uh, nice play by Mika. Just dropped it to me and uh, try to get the middle for a shot, and uh, lucky enough it, it went in, so it was uh, it was good. It's obviously such an important time in the season right now. You guys have kind of stressed that, just getting hot right from the start. So what did it mean to get this win tonight for you guys? It was big against a really good team in, in this league. And, uh, you know, we uh, wanted to play better defense. And, uh, you know, I think we did a good job. And um, it was a big win for us coming back uh, from the break. The effort you guys got from Jonathan tonight to, to keep you in it as the game went on. Can you talk about how important he was for you? Yeah, he made a couple of big saves, especially that one late, uh, last minute, I think. So, um, you know, he's been really good for us all year, and uh, I mean, it's uh, good to have him. Did he feel like it is the game one? Those four game-winning goals for Alexi Lafreniere now tied with Jimmy VC for second on the team behind only Chris Kreider. So he steps up in overtime in a game where, you said it, Hank, right? This was a, a, a game through two periods where you felt like the Rangers had more, and maybe yep. it was just an example of what sometimes you see after eight days without a game. Yeah, and we talked about it, especially that first pair. It was a little sloppy. You saw Colorado be sloppy on the power play. The Rangers had a couple, a couple of misplays all over the ice, but it, it it does take some time, you know. You, you can practice, but when you're away from the game for eight days, mentally you, you're not sharp. But then it's even more important to really play a smart, simple game. Yeah. And uh, obviously this was a great test. Coming back after a break, you, you face one of the best teams in the league. I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah. I mean, McK you talked about McKinnon. He was outstanding. You mm -hmm. can notice him almost every shift. Mm -hmm. He got one goal, yes, but other than that, give up one goal against his team, that, that's a good night. Well, like, John, I want to add to that because 
for a while here, we haven't seen the Rangers play their best. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, does anybody in the East really scare you? Not really. You know? But you see this team come in here, and Colorado, that's a scary squad. If you're going to play them seven-game series, like, whew, mm -hmm. you know, that's a good team, right? The Rangers would be the underdog in that series. Thankfully, you don't have to play them until the end. But there's nobody in the East that makes me feel the way that I felt watching this game and seeing Colorado perform at a high level. Yeah, it was more than 51 minutes for the Rangers without a goal. But then with about eight and a half minutes left in the third, Artemi Panarin found himself on the ice after the Rangers win a faceoff and eventually puts the puck in the back of the net against Alex Georgiev yeah. to tie the game. It's part of our film room, powered by CDW. Steve, take us through it. Well, if there's one area that really stands out this season compared to last is the Rangers off of face-offs. And they have the fourth most goals off of face-offs, second most uh, in quality. So they get a lot of great chances. When they win this draw, it's a quick D to D low, but there's support from Panarin as he flushes around. And make no mistake, they want him to have the puck here, and they want to get him inside. So they have to run a switch and add some confusion. And right now, this is puck possession possessed. To me, Panarin knew that he wanted to get there. There's plenty of traffic. It looks like a carom off McKinnon, but there was possibly just enough traffic to really throw Georgiev off. But again, I think it's what the Rangers have really established this year is they have a lot of set plays. I, I think Keandre said before the break that they have as many as 20 set face-off plays. We didn't see hmm. anything like that last year. And Panetta does that move so well. We've seen so many goals yeah, from oh. him where he cuts across. And what makes it so hard for a goalie? When a guy cuts across, you can never really, really get set with your feet. It's a lot easier for a goalie facing a guy coming at you because your feet are set and you get ready for the shot. But Panarin does it so well when he goes across and because he has such a strong core, he can shoot at any time. So for any goalie trying to move side to side and, and be ready for that shot, it makes it extremely hard. Plus, you have the screen. Yeah. But it, you've seen a lot of goals this year from Panarin where he just skates across and just like that, he rips it. And, and it kind of catches goalies by surprise because mm -hmm. it's very hard to get your feet set. Goal number 31, point number 67 in game number 50 for Artemi Panarin. The game-winning goal by Lafreniere was assisted by... Jonathan Quick, his first point as a Ranger, and Mika Zibanejad. Let's hear from number 93 after the game. What can you say about what Jonathan yeah. Quick did for yeah. you guys back yeah, there tonight? I mean, it's, um, we're, we're fortunate enough to have uh, those two guys back there. Uh, today was Quickie, um, really just giving us a chance to win. Um, and I feel like that's that's something that we get every, every night, uh, no matter what. But, um, yeah, I mean, Quickie's been... Uh, been great he, he was unbelievable tonight and and uh, uh yeah i mean we, we're uh, extremely lucky and, and happy to have him just confidence wise to get a win like this tonight coming back from the break i, I know it was important for you guys to kind of hit the ground running so what was the significance of this one yeah i mean it's um it's one win, but it's it's um, you know we, we uh, get get a little bit of restart. Even though we won the last game before the break in Ottawa, I think um, January as a as a whole wasn't our, our best month this year and or this season. And and uh, we've talked about it. We wanted to get a good start coming off this break, and and uh, you know we uh, got the win tonight, and, and uh, we just got to keep going. So uh, so this one this one means a lot.